Music matters. Ten piece tone, boss life spent. Yes, yeah. sir, yes, sir. How you guys doing? Shit, living, man. Man, can't complain, can't call can't it. Complain. Appreciate you doing this. Appreciate you doing this. Thank you for having us, yeah, man. Appreciate you for having us, man. Yeah, of course. I, I I first didn't know if I was gonna be doing you guys separately or together, but it seems like you guys kind of roll as a team, huh? Yeah, yeah for, for sure, for sure. We How gotta... did you guys meet? Damn, somebody just asked me this question too. I, I met Spence through. Can you just get up a little bit closer, Mike. Thank yeah. you, bro. Appreciate it. I had met Spence through pretty much. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my big uh, one of my big homies was making beat. I mean, making music on his beats. So I tapped in with him, bought a beat from him. And then shit, the rest is history. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was just like a really natural thing. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Like, I liked, I appreciated how he reached out to me when he, because a lot of people want beats, but like his approach to it was different. And I knew how young he was. So mm -hmm. when I put it all together, I'm like, I sat on it for a minute. I heard the song he did. I'm like, you know what? We need to get a little, we need to, it really just happened naturally, but we just kind of naturally just came together and started making music. What was different about the way he reached out? Like, do some people reach out, they're kind of, like, rude or cold or what? No, it ain't about that. He was just more about business first, yeah. you know. And he was like, I'm trying to get you this. I'm, he was trying to get me right. So I took note of that and was like, okay, I like that. And I knew he was younger. And, you know, when it's uncommon, you know, well, it's, it's less common in, in the younger generation to really be, like, business first without trying to, you know, let me see what I can get from him first. You feel me? So yeah. I respected how he came. And ever since then, we've been rocking. Yeah, I feel that. I feel like a lot of people, there. there's a lot of, like, in this industry, there's definitely an age discrepancy, you know? Like, yeah. there's a lot of people who look at things a certain way versus people who look at things a younger way. Right. And I feel like you're right. And a lot of the younger generation, somebody will, instead of looking at somebody and being like, how can I work with them? They'll look at them and say, what can I get out of them? Exactly. Especially as a producer. Exactly. I feel like on that, on yeah. that level. Yeah, it's grimy. Do you get artists coming to you on all kinds of crazy shit often? To this or? day. To this day. Yeah. Like, that, I feel like that would never stop, though. Like, mm -hmm. I was just watching Kanye's documentary, and he was like... And it's really because, you know, you grow up, and we grow up. When you grow up in the city, and you got your boys and everybody, you know, they and they see you doing something, they're like, hey, bro, you know, I came up with you. You know, yeah. in a sense. Uh, what can I, you know, can I get something, too? I'm trying to blow up, too. I'm trying to be a rapper, so... You know, you get that a lot as a producer, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. Now, you produce, but you you also rap. So what, what did you start doing? Like, did you start with one or at the same I time? I can say, look, because I've been getting that question a lot, too. Uh -huh. And I want to say that I started rapping first. Because not, like, writing nothing down, but I would, like, I would rap Snoop. I would rap Dre. Everything that was high in the 90s. I'm born in 93. So I would, I would yeah. sit there in the... Ever since I can remember, I got a video of me at one years old just rapping uh, Dre, uh, Keep the Heads Ringing. I was a little kid. So I really started out rapping, and then later on, probably around 12, 13, I got into making beats. My big cousin put Fruity Loops, the demo, on my uh, PC, mm -hmm. and I just took it on one since then. So have you been producing for that long? How different is the technology that you started with based on the technology mm -hmm. you're producing on now? I would imagine it's not even... Comparable. So I'm seeing how the that's future is going. Question. I'm yeah. seeing how the like I'm I saw like you're saying I saw the, I got to see a whole little wave kind of coming come, come mm -hmm. through. So I'm seeing like now everything is getting smaller. You could say huh. I started on the PC and the PC was fat as hell. You know, so like they went from PC to a Mac, then the Macs got smaller, and now it's like you got down we got down to the iPads, and now we Mad got Lib, yeah, and now we got like iPhone. You can make a beat on the iPhone. So I'm trying to, you know, perfect that more, like, the smaller technology, see what I can do with that. I feel like that's the future. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I mean, just speaking on that from, like, my perspective, whenever I think of the Mad Lib, or whenever I think of the iPad thing, uh -huh. I think of Mad Lib. Uh -huh. How Mad Lib made that project with Freddie Gibbs he on made, an uh, iPad. He made Pinata? Yeah, he uh -huh. made Pinata on an iPad. What? Uh -huh. Yeah, and Bandana. He made them both on an iPad. What? Produced the entire album on an iPad. And that was, like, the first instance for me where I was like, damn, you really can do this shit with nothing. with nothing. Right. Or like how Cole Bennett right now is shooting videos on iPhones and putting them out. He just yeah. shot that video with Yachty on the, on the iPhone. That. Wow. that shit's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty wild. It's it's, it's inspiring, I think, for right. people who don't have that much. They come from nothing, and you know, yeah. you really can do it now. That's what it's about. Yeah, That's having what the it's confidence about. in that. You know, that little extra push. Like, you can do this shit out of nothing, for sure. That's yeah. what we always did. You know, we always just worked with what we had, really. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what it was. And before I had a computer, I was making beats on the table. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, letting people rap to that. Uh-huh. Were you one of those kids in school who'd be pounding on the table yeah, making beats? I, I was that kid. I was doing the same shit. I was that kid. Teachers would be mad. <laughs> but I was that kid. When I was a uh, I was like a freshman or some shit in high school, I remember I got I got I, I got detention for doing that. Just like pounding <laughs> I'm doing it in detention. That's like the dumbest <laughs> shit. I'm the nigga doing it in detention. <laughs> Dead ass. Where'd you guys grow up? Uh, shit. Honestly, we really. I grew up in Pinot, Richmond. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? All out that way. From Richmond, grew up in Pinot. So that shit was like a, a very big. I want to say a plus for me, bro. I got to see a lot of diverse people. Yeah, I was open to a lot of different shit. You know what I mean? I went to like five different high schools in the Contra Costa district, so I seen a lot of different motherfuckers from the same area, but not too far, you know. But you got to see how different people was. Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm, I feel like that's a big ass part on, you know, what I'm saying how I make my music too now, because I'm so open to all of the aspects of life and other people I've been around. So you know what I mean? I right. consider them. Because there's a lot of diversity out there. Because you, you, you look at the Pinole area, and that's way different demographically than the Richmond area, correct? Way, way different. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What was your high school experience like? Like, were you I- invested in school at all? Did you, like, care about it, or did you try your best, or what was it like? Uh, I feel like a lot of people always get that, the same-ass quote, but uh-huh. I always got the, he's he's not, um, he's smart, but he's not using his full potential on the school. I was more so focused on finessing the school. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to get out of class and not get marked absent. I'm trying to make sure I get <laughs> on attendance. And, yeah. You know, I'm not there, shit. Like, that's how I was coming at school. But even then, I always finesse my way through everything, bro. Like, I was taught that from a young nigga. You know, you got to get it how you get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in Oakland. Um, what part of Oakland? I grew up in North Oakland. That's where I'm from. Okay. Um, I'm 62nd in Dover, so it was almost kind of Berkeley. Mm. So I kind of got the best of both worlds too. Like, even though North Oakland is is uh, you know the there's there's really no line except for Alcatraz between us and Berkeley. So it for sure leaked that culture leaked into North Oakland, but and North Oakland culture leaked into Berkeley. But you know it was really like diverse. I got to go up to Cal and you know mm. be on Telegraph and oh, see be exposed to the world at. More than I would in, uh, like, my dad from East Oakland, uh, the village. So, 6-9 Ville. So, it's like, that area is that area, and it's not much going on. There's no college over there. There's no, you know, the only foot traffic is, you know, really hood traffic. So, yeah. I got to see a whole bunch of just diversity by being in North Oakland. And being from Oakland, you know, you still get a being from Oakland. Like, I went to Berkeley High. Uh I went to Berkeley High. It was it was way more ladies up there for me. So I, I, I stayed right by Tech, but I was like, you know, Berkeley High is a place for me. And, I you know, I knew about the musical background at Berkeley, so I was like, yeah, that's where I want to go. Yeah, I've always, like, talked to, whenever I talk to rappers from Berkeley, yeah. it's always been interesting to me because, you know, Oakland has such a rich a rich history in hip-hop, but right. Berkeley's musical history is more rooted in rock music. Right. So it's like when you get those two worlds colliding, it's a really interesting like mix of people that come out of Berkeley musically. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's why I went there. Mm-hmm. I went, originally, my parents my parents went there, too. Graduated class 85, so they told me about like Club Nouveau, the why you treat me so bad. <laughs> you know, I got five on the sample, so that's the main one of the main reasons why I I was like, yeah, I want to go there. Even though I wasn't so musically driven at the time, yeah, I was just more like, I love music, so I want to go where the music is popping. You know, that makes sense. When did you first get into music? Like, first wanting to create? I first got into music probably. My granddad had got me a little electric electric piano, and when he got me that, I was like, okay, I can I can get with this. And before that. I always just been a music baby, I could say. Like like I said, when I was one years old, before I was one, I, I was bobbing my head and catching beats. So, like, I've always been musically inclined. But when I would get older, when I got older, I just, like, it was a, a old McDonald little rotating arrow. And I would just push it backwards, and it sounded like it was scratching to me. So, I got it. <laughs> I thought I was DJing. It's like a little turntable. Yeah, like a turntable. Yeah. So, I've been in, I just, you know, and been banging on tables and making Beatboxing was cool back then, so you know I done I done it all. I done I done, done it all. Oh, baby. Same with you, Tone. Like when did you originally start getting into music? Uh, 
I honestly, my shit is like a whole different story for me because I've always loved music, like all type of music. You mm. know what I mean? Like I've never been into one box when it came to genres that I like to listen to because I my my mom is gypsy and Native American. Wow, okay. So she's, you know, a little mixed. You know what I'm saying? So she's listening to different music compared to my, what my dad's side of the family is. He's black, so you know what I'm saying? We listening to Tupac, all this shit over here. Don't get me wrong. My my other side listening to that shit too, but I like your story about how you came out to the I came out the womb to some. Well yeah, I ain't gonna, well yeah, yeah. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I feel like I was chosen for this shit. Uh, my mom was pushing me out at the hospital for like fucking damn near 24 hours, like plus I was not coming out. And then like they finally was like, all right, well we're gonna chill for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Give you a break. My pops put on MTV Jams and Tupac. <laughs> What you wanna do for love came on and I just popped out that bitch. You feel me? Like I just bounced out, like, yeah, it's time to party. You know what I'm saying? Was, I knew what time it was. So and my dad always been a big ass Tupac fan. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I grew up on Tupac as a young nigga. That was like always the shit I always heard. Mm -hmm. 50 Cent Tupac was like my biggest inspiration as a young nigga. I knew I liked the music, but I knew I wasn't trying to make music at the time. Mm. And I grew up, uh, I went to school in Pano, Pano Middle. We had Kuya, uh, which is Kuya Beats. Kuya Beats, I Am Sue, Pilo, yeah. Big Brother. They was our after school program teachers. Jayant. So they was wow, trying, okay. Yeah, they was trying to get in Jay Ant. Yeah. Jay Ant, Oliver, Sue was up there fucking with uh -huh. us, Pilo. You know what I'm saying? They was trying to get us in the studio and work with music, but I was the like kid. Like that like, early HBK shit. Yeah, yeah I wasn't yeah. even fucking with it though. I was, I was too cool. Yeah. I didn't want to make music. <laughs> and then when I got out of high school, I made my first song at 19. My friend told me come to the studio, and then shit, like I put it out, and motherfuckers was thinking it was my song. Mm. I got on his song, and they thought it was my shit. So they just was like, "Man, you should keep going." So I've been rapping since nineteen. I'm twenty three now, so about what four or five years. Yeah. What do you think the biggest thing you've learned about rapping in that time since you've been doing it for a good amount of time now? Uh, the biggest thing I've learned is a lot of the industry shit. I would say like. Huh. What comes with the industry, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? The the people that come and go, you know what I'm saying? Family, friends. You got to just be prepared for what comes with the industry. And that's like the biggest shit I learned from this rap shit. Like, I built a lot of real relationships with genuine people. And then I fell off with people that I've been knowing my whole life because of the music. You know what I'm saying? You just mm -hmm. grow. You know how it is. When you grow, some people don't grow with you. So you just got to find your lane and fuck with who fuck with you. Yeah, so I, I think it's definitely about also about finding people who they want to see you grow as much as you want to grow, and if they do, then they'll be there for the ride and they'll be supportive, opposed to saying like, "Oh, they're on, you're on some fake shit, you switched up or whatever." Exactly. But it's like you know what I mean. But not really seeing genuinely, bro. You're growing. Yeah. You're not switching up on me. You're not acting fake. Mm -hmm. You just getting bigger. Yeah. There's certain sh I can't be with you every day like I used to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And niggas start to feel some type of way about that. And that's not fake. I mean, that's just, you know, you, you're growing. You're, you're getting shifting priorities, man. There's like, if, if, you're, if people around you don't want you to grow, don't want you to succeed, are they really your friends? It was never really your friends. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's the thing, too. People in, in the industry, too, uh, it'd be other artists and motherfuckers that'd be like, they'll keep you out watching that Kanye shit. I was seeing how Dave Dash was like keeping him around, yeah. but didn't want him to surpass them niggas. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, when motherfuckers do little shit like that, you got to be aware of, like, who you're around. and mm -hmm. Don't nobody really want to see you do better than them. That's yeah. what I'm getting at. You know what I'm saying? Are you careful with that in regards to who you collaborate with and who you work with? Like, it seems like you guys work together a lot, but do you have a, kind of, like, a close net, close-knit group of people you work with? Uh, Yeah, pretty much. We do got a real close, close little group. Um, Beat-wise, Boss Life, Big Spence, Drew Bang. Uh, shit, who else we fuck with? Eli, we been Eli. With Eli lately. Um, Tay, Tay made the wave. Mm -hmm. My boy Twenty Four mm -hmm. on uh, Stockton, I believe. Yep, yep. Twenty Four going crazy. Yeah, yeah, Tay made the wave. Stupid. Yep, yep. Eli, we been yeah, Eli crazy, making beats, and we've been we've been at it. Like you know, we've been we got a good groove going because, mm -hmm. like you know, we ain't been at it for that, that long. We started rapping together since like what twenty nineteen. Yeah. So since twenty nineteen, we've been rapping together. Um, 
So we we getting back into you know the whole pandemic happened, so we getting back into our little groove again, and so we've been reaching out. I, I used to make a lot of the beats, but what we've been doing lately is reaching out to way more producers. You yeah, know, and collaborating way more with other people just to get different sounds because we don't want to get locked into one sound ever. You know, even though except for the funk, I I, I love the funk. You know, I, I stay funky for life. Did you did, are you into funk music like that? Like did oh, you grow yeah. up on a lot of funk oh, music? Yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up on a lot of that. Yeah. Funk. Parliament, all of everything, like Funkadelic. George, funk, yeah. Everybody. Uh my pops, my granddad. I was around a lot of music lovers. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't really make music, but they love music. I've been around records, you know, I I got records out in Atlanta in my folks' house. So it's like, you know, I just really love music. I'm a music lover come from a long line of music lovers i'm a student you know i'm mm. a student to the music so i love i love it yeah man for sure um tone i want to ask you about the your uh, your latest project godson how, how how much did you work on that with spence like how how, how many of those tracks are your beats shit damn near the, like half the tape is him and drew banger yeah, what do you think you learned from like sitting down and making that cohesive project? Like getting down and really locking into the album process. Um, you said oh, my my bad. What was the question? No, I'm saying like when you locked in like to really create the album. What do you think you learned about making a project from front to back? Oh, most definitely. Okay, mm-hmm. so learning about making the album is not just the album. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The music is some of it. Well, it's most of it. But there's a whole lot of shit that comes with it, too. You got to mm-hmm. do photo shoots, videos, and promotion. You know what I'm saying? Cover arts and making sure you, you know what I'm saying? You catching the people eye. Yeah. Right. So the music could be amazing, but if you're not, people have short attention spans. So if you can't keep the people's attention for long enough, they're not going to listen to the song. You know what I mean? So you got to, I'm saying pretty much let the people feel you and see you. So mm-hmm. yeah, I feel like that's what I learned the most. Yeah. You can't—they can't just hear you. They gotta feel you, see you. You know what I'm saying? Really grasp you in, because that's when a person comes a fan. They like I love the, the type of music he make. I love his style. I like how he how he hold himself. You know what I'm saying? Like he's a good dude. So that's what make people real genuine fans, and they gonna rock with you forever at that point. Yeah. But I, back on the note, like when you said, what was it like when we uh, locked in and made that album? Like, so for me and him, the workflow is so fluid and so easy that Mm -hmm. it works together and it just happens, like, naturally, like, so it wasn't like we were specifically, like... Move this up a little bit. Yeah. It wasn't like we were specifically, like, let's get in the studio and make uh, something crazy. It was more like, let's just keep working. Yeah. And we was, that like I said, that groove that we catching again. We was just in that groove, really. Locked it's in. Like that flow state. That flow state. Yeah, yeah exactly. Literally. Yeah. So you guys are constantly like in the studio working together. Like when you're in the studio, just it, it, it's not, it's in not the like without me. Really? I'm not in the studio without him. Okay, right. but it's not like you guys go in to make a project. You go in and you're just like, let's see what comes out today, and then if yeah. after a certain amount of time, yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. in there just throwing shit at the wall, uh, whatever sticks. Right, right. Putting it together, kind of like like a puzzle. Yeah, that makes sense. When you go into the studio, do you find yourself having to be in a certain mindset to be able to create? Hell For yeah. Sure. Hell sure. yeah. That's crazy you just said that. We were literally just in the lab, and I had some little shit throwing off my vibe. Yeah. And this nigga just came like, bro, you got to get back in here. You know what I'm saying? It's time mm-hmm. to get back in. We here. You know what I'm saying? Don't let that outside shit. Outside shit is going to be outside shit, but when yeah. we inside here and we locked in, you got to be in that mindset. This is what we came to do. What kind of stuff will you do to like get back in that proper headspace? Smoke some good weed. <laughs> I might. I, he don't sip syrup, but I sip syrup. Mm. Me and my nigga Lil Lean. <laughs> yeah, we be high as Lil Lean do. <laughs> yeah, we be we be pulling up. Get you know what I'm saying. Got to get yourself right. Whatever is cool for you. I don't encourage nobody to do drugs. You know what I'm saying. But whatever floats your boat, man. Just get your mind right. Yeah, get your mind right. You know what I'm saying. You ain't got to do too much. Yeah, and I, I fuck with shrooms too. Hmm. Have, have you, like, learned a lot from psychedelics? I'd be interested to ask you that because I feel like a lot of people who get super into psychedelics do so because of the process and the things they learn from them. Most definitely. I've, I've, I've learned a lot of shit just being more conscious after hmm. I've took, you know, shrooms. And I know a lot of people, may, it sounds all good, like you're just going to be all third eye open after you high one time. <laughs> it's not like that, bro. Like, it takes time and you have to want to be open to it. 
You want to yeah. be accepting like what's coming to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's, I'm a real religious person. Not religious, but I'm conscious. Is that why your project's named God's Son? Like, what was the idea behind that title, and how did that play into your religion? Uh, honestly, it's like this. I, you know, I fought a little case for, you know, I had a little pimp case or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? I ain't perfect, and I know I'm not the worst, but I am God's son. You know what hmm. I'm saying? I'm what he made me, and I know he knows my rights, my wrongs, my heart. He know, You know what I'm saying? He know what my intentions are, and I just wanted people to understand that, like, in the cover art, it's, a dev- it's the devil behind me. He's on my back. But I'm still just sitting in my posture, and I'm, you know, I'm not really sweating it because I'm God's son. You know what I'm saying? I want people to realize the devil will test you all the time. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, you still gotta remain God's son and know what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not particularly religious, but I feel like one thing that it does is it grounds people. It gives them like a place to go back to. You know, like. When everything in your life goes awry, can go to shit or whatever, you go back and then you still have like your your faith. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's the thing. Like you said, faith is is the the key word. Mm. You gotta have faith in something. Yeah. You don't believe mm. in nothing, you'll fall for anything. Mm. Huh. Yeah, I mean, be that religion, be that yourself, be that other people, the world, mm. the vision, whatever. Mm. You have to believe in something. If you don't believe in anything, like you said, you'll fall for anything, for anything brother. Yeah. Were were you raised religious, or is that something you found on your own? Uh. Yeah, and no, my family was, like, aware, Christians and stuff. Like, I went to church as a kid with my mm-hmm. granny. But I never really was too, like, I had questions. I was that kid, like, but why did, why do we do this and that? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. it didn't make sense to me. So as I got older, crazy part, bro, this nigga right here, yeah. lost like <laughs> Big Spence. God is striking me down right now. He gave me the book. It's called self self realization. Mm. Actually, it's called the science of self realization. Mm. So it's more of like you know what I'm saying, a little background on like what you trying to figure out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That book opened up my eyes. You know what I'm saying? It opened up my shit to a whole different perspective of life. And you know what I'm saying? But this nigga gave me that book. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Huh? What that book do for you, Spence? I imagine if you were to share it with somebody, it had to have a pretty big impact on you. Keep it lit. I'm gonna keep it so <laughs> G lit." I used to have a bookshop. <laughs> what? This story is so crazy. That is crazy. I got the book. I used to have a bookshop. Like had one? Like you owned one? Like you can say <laughs> that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I had one. And um it was not too far from the crib. I was just in there just uh the the original owners had like kind of, you know, didn't want to handle the business anymore, so we handled the business. Me and my little partners um and it has so much game just in that shop. Yeah. Just like books like that and many more. Books of value. That was the first time I seen like books really sell like weed. You know, I seen I seen them make a couple hundred dollars a day off of selling books. My little partners and uh I stepped in and it was kinda like, Okay, got in where I fit in, but it was a beautiful thing it, while it lasted, it didn't last more than like a year, but it was a uh, it was pretty cool to have a black owned. We was like we was teenagers, you know. They was teenagers. I was probably like in my early twenties, mm-hmm. so you know it was just cool to have. We peeped what was going on, and that just made me turn into more of a reader. You know, I'm like, why are all these books selling? Why that book just sell for a hundred dollars? You know, the, the we kept everything we could from the shop, and that was that was just. Definitely a book that I put to the side. Like we we keeping this. I got a couple crates full of books that is just you know a lot of game. I haven't dove into it all, but I'm climbing through it. Yeah, reading can change your life in a lot of ways. I mean, like it it definitely changed mine. And I I've read some books that have completely reassessed the way I look at stuff. And I feel like oh, part of the reason you could take so much from a book too is like. It, if you hear things from a person, there's you're always going to question what the person's motive is when telling you. But for whatever reason, I don't know why it's like this, but at least for me, when I read a book, I always feel like it's coming from a genuine place if somebody took the time to sit down and write an entire novel about what they're saying. Right. I feel you. I feel that too. Yeah. Right. So if you so when you owned a bookstore, I get that, that that's so crazy to me. Yeah. What, what did you like? How did that? Were you making music at that time? How did you of transition? Course. Okay, you were doing both. At that time, I was DJing. 
Oh, uh, okay. DJing. Where'd you DJ at? Just around here in the Bay? Around the Bay, man. We did We did my boy. I started at my boy's spot, Prime, uh, mm-hmm. that I'm wearing, that we wearing right now, Prime. Shout, out, Prime. Shout, Shout out, out Prime. Shout out to Prime. We was, uh, I started there. Uh, with them, I started with Tom Bogo. He, I did his first uh, cool release, little party. So, you know, I started DJing. And just We had a party called Anything Is Possible in the town. Now it's pretty lit. My boy's still lit. Shout out Drew Banger, Mellis Wave, you know, DJ Shrugs, you know. Everybody doing their own thing right now. Mm-hmm. But we all together. I don't know. Mellis Wave is so short, man. This nigga didn't DJ for Duckworth. Oh, uh, yeah. All in different fucking Everybody. states. Yeah, and different outside the country. Shout out to Duckworth, too. Yeah. Yeah, we've been he out the country. a lot of music for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Was that hard for you when COVID kind of shut shows down, not man, being able to DJ? It was sick, bro. But I wasn't really... When COVID shut down, I wasn't DJing. I was oh, rapping. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but I was just... We was just started getting in our rap groove, started doing our rap thing. Yeah. We had a crazy-ass show in Santa Cruz man. right before mm-hmm. the pandemic man. hit. Like, Man, that was lit. We're at Catalyst? Or? Yep. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Literally tore the roof off that motherfucker. Jesus, who was on the bill? Uh, Shooter Gang Coney and me. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. We got a thing where it's like, if they book me, I'm bringing him. And if they book <laughs> him, he's bringing me. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you run that's it. That's cool. I mean, that's how you really build something. Like community, yeah. you know? Most right. definitely. Like, you really right. got to have somebody, especially on a creative level in music, that you can rely on and you can trust and you can really ha- know has your back. Hell that yeah. Part. And that's, definitely. that's hard to come by, too. Yeah. Have you guys played live since the pandemic yet, or are you not? Hell have, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. just had a, a sold-out show. Sold-out first headline show. Where yeah. at? In Berkeley Cornerstone. Oh, Shout good for you. Hey, what do you think of the sound of Cornerstone? I've heard some people say it's, like, ridiculously good. Like, it's unreal compared to other, other Shit, venues. I say that, too. Yeah, I was going to say, I could, I could for sure leave. Yeah, Shout-out to all them people working there, too. They did their thing, man. Yeah, Shout-out to every, the staff, because they were some real people. I, mm-hmm. I, love, I love Cornerstone, Berkeley. Cornerstone's one of my favorite venues to go see shows at. I don't know what it is. I think it's just like, it, it's like the perfect size. You know, it's not a big venue, but it's definitely not a small venue. It's like it's that not, medium perfect. place that works out And they super got a well. little extra space if you want to be upstairs type shit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, there's like, uh, because they have that whole uh, upstairs section. And then isn't there like a whole other room too? And there's like a bar and shit. Yeah. It's yep. always bigger than like, I, I feel like you think when you're seeing a show. Oh, yep. babies. Yeah. When you guys, um, I mean, since you've been at this for a while, I imagine there's been times where, like, you haven't been seeing results in the way you want it, oh, yeah. or been, like, times where you weren't seeing the numbers you want to. What kind of things keep you motivated to keep going? Uh, honestly, I could say my opinion, I got to the point with me and him, like, mm-hmm. we, we had so many talks, like, man, this shit not doing what we think it's going to do. But then again, it got to the point where it's like, we not discouraged off of it at all. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. more motivation just to keep going. Like this shit going, they starting to hear us too. It's picking up. So you, you, you spoke on an earlier faith or you spoke mm-hmm. on an earlier, yep. we were talking about faith. You know, I just got faith and I believe that this is my purpose, you know? So I tried not to let life get me down about it, but at the same time, that's why we try to have fun with it, you know? Because it's a, it's, it is a, a creative uh, outlet, mm. you know, to just have fun. The important thing, too, is I feel like a lot of artists get into a groove where they start doing something, but they forgot how why they originally loved it. They forgot what made them fall in love with it in the first place, and that's when it starts feeling like a job. And then you're going to want to stop doing it real quick. We was just going through this, literally, uh-huh. like, I, I promise you, it was just at, like, we was just going to work. Yeah. Like, we was just going to work. Every time we was going to the studio, it felt like work. Because we was, no, we knew that we had to make something happen. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, we got to make something happen. But now, this shit fun again. Mm-hmm. not going to lie to you. I've been having hella fun in the studio. I've been going there and freestyling and shit. Do like, you feel like when you go in and you're having more fun, not only are you more excited, but do you feel like stuff <clears> comes out better? Way better. Ten yeah. times better. It comes out with the energy that I want. Yeah. Because I got my own brand itself. It's called Violent Society Clothing. I was just about to ask you about that. Tell yeah. me about that a little bit. Uh, Pretty much, Violent Society Clothing is a brand I started with my, my boy, Ali Mo Better. Mm-hmm. We was like in middle school. We just came up with the name. And the idea was to just like powerful black people and people that come from a community or a violent society. But they, they mm-hmm. made it out and made themselves something great. So we was putting like Malcolm X... You know, Tupac, 
Muhammad Ali, you know, just great black people that was doing, you know what I'm saying, shit for us and making it like, you can you can do it too, you know what I mean? Yeah. And shit, when we, uh, we got a little older, my little brother, he started, he went to school and shit, so I kind of just took over the brand. And I, I was throwing parties. I was throwing house parties. Uh, Airbnbs, actually. I started that shit in the Bay Area. Yeah. I'm the one who started that shit. I'm going to say it right here. Look me up. It's look, like, up. look me look up. It's, 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 up. It's, on, it's on the record for sure. <laughs> TMPs, man, I threw my first 19th party. My 19th birthday party It's called Pop Pussy, Not Pistols. Yeah, I, I seen the hoodies with that and everything. Yeah, that was the that was the movement. So that's the energy I'm bringing. Like, I just want my motherfuckers to have fun, come and enjoy themselves. So, yeah. That's cool that you're, spe- especially, like, I feel like at that point, too, the brand transcends more than just clothing. It's a message, you know? You're trying to, like, like you said, demote the idea of violence. And it's, it's kind of cool that you named the, like, you named the brand Violent Society, because I feel like it's, like, it's very contrastual, you know what I mean? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives mm-hmm. them a, like, why are you, like, it makes you want to know why is it called this. Yeah. I'm going to explain mm-hmm. it to you. This is where we come from, but we ain't all, you know what I'm saying? I just uh-huh. come from a violent society. Yeah, right. I guess everybody does in that sense. You know what I mean? And then uh, now you kind of feel more relatable, don't you? Yeah, too. I do. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, yeah. I, I totally see what you mean now. My well, babies. <laughs> when did you first get into like clothing? Like because it, I, 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 it's funny. Like as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into like fashion and clothing, and sort of given a bit more about like what I wear and stuff. Oh, okay. When did you first get interested in like the idea of making clothes? Uh. Middle school is when we started making the clothes, but uh-huh. I've always been a fly ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I've always been a fly ass nigga. Yeah, Shout out to that. moms and pops. Say that. No cap. <laughs> and my auntie Teeny Bird, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> she she was the, my auntie on the block who was gonna make sure we was fresh. Fitted. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was gonna do whatever it took for us to be fresh. Uh-huh. And that shit right there molded me to like, you know, like I was accustomed to nice shit. Yeah. I knew that, that I wanted to be a fly little nigga. And I was a little handsome, pretty boy nigga with long hair, so it was like, you know what I mean? That was my lane. Yeah. And when I got when I got in it, I'm like, damn, it's the bitches like me, niggas, <laughs> niggas fuck with me because you just cool, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, hey, yeah. works for everybody. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta play your cards how it was dealt, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 cool to me now that so many people like have like clothing brands and like companies and like stuff like that that has a message you know right. I, I like I, I like wearing shit that like has something to say because I feel like it's an expression of yourself you know yeah, like yeah. I, I just bought this one hoodie from this brand uh, it's called a we're not really strangers it's a dope streetwear brand and then the back of it just says uh, your anxiety's lying to you that's like what the what the hoodie says mm. and it's like I bought that and I, I got really into like buying stuff with like quotes and shit it's, it's cool to like I, I don't know. I think it's a, it's more interesting to wear clothes that like are an expression of yourself. You a know message. what I mean? Yeah, exactly. A message. I feel mm. that? Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. I, I most definitely like the this nigga for show. Uh-huh. Right? This nigga Spence, his outfit is gonna for surely give his energy. I don't care <laughs> what the fuck he got on. He's gonna for sure. You gonna yeah. know like that's big Spence. He gonna have on. He might have a cheetah print shirt on today <laughs> with nothing underneath that motherfucker. No shirt underneath. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. fucking sixty degrees. We're in the Bay Area. This nigga got a shirt open yeah. and his buffs on. Yeah. And he doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> hey, and that's him. You feel yeah. me? That's how he coming. I'll but you know, this. then you gonna see me right on the side with my I'll shit banging bang. and hanging on the side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Popping my peas at a BZ. You know? Peas. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, when you guys uh, performed at Cornerstone and you said that crowd was sold out. Was that like nerve wracking at all to you to go out on stage in front of that many people, or does it come natural? Nah, this shit is in us. It's you think in so? us. Yeah. yeah, we was ready for that one. Most like, definitely, we wanted that. You know, pandemic. We was coming out the pandemic, so we like we hungry for something. Yeah, so. mm. niggas was most definitely hungry for that. So we got, we got that. out there. We ate. Yeah. Yeah, so. I feel like through the pandemic, that was something that was tough for a lot of artists not be able to play live, especially people who made their income off playing shows. You know what I right. mean? It's like then. You go into the pandemic and it's just a total loss of shows and there's absolutely no income coming in for so many artists. That was like a hard thing for me to like watch happen. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, it's terrible too because 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 uh, you I mean you guys know firsthand these fools aren't making anything off of streaming. They get yeah. scammed on streaming. That's yeah. just terrible. Most yeah. definitely. Um, I want to ask you about your project, King of the Underground, Spence. Yeah. Uh, do you feel connected to the underground in the Bay Area specifically? Because like 
I know like some some artists I've talked to like don't like that term underground, but I've always felt like I think the underground to me is just like anybody who's doing something that's different than the mainstream. Like, what yeah. do you define the underground to be? The mm-hmm. underground, exactly that. Uh, you know, we doing different than the mainstream because, like, mm-hmm. I'm saying that not the Bay Area, not the Bay specifically, but like the underground as a whole. Like, because I can make all kind of music, and I don't want to be. I'm not confined to just one, and you know, I'm still putting stuff out, and it's still coming out. But y'all see what I really mean by that in the near future. Do you think, like, as you get bigger, like, the idea of being an underground artist would still stick with you, or do you think then it wouldn't be, like, a same thing? Because to me, I've like I said, like, I've always felt like it's more of, like, a style opposed to, like, yeah. where you are. Because right. I feel like the majority of, like, interesting musical movements come from the underground of whatever scene you're in. Right. So, we'll see. Yeah. You know? Do you feel connected to the Bay Area musically? Because a lot of your music to me sounds like incredibly inspired by the Bay Area. Most definitely. I'm a Bay baby. I'm a town baby. So, yeah, most definitely. I grew up on everything Bay and funky, like I said. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I feel a deep connection to the funk. What were like some of the main Bay Area artists that like inspired you as you grew up? Man, Richie Rich, mm. Messy Marv, Uncle Short, Uncle Fody, you know. All the unks of the bay, you know, I grew up off the funk mob, you know, Max Sean and them, you feel me? All type of, uh, you know, all type of stuff. So, loonies, you know what I'm saying? So, I grew up on that. And like I said, I'm a real town baby, a trunk baby, as they say. You know, pops had slapped in the trunk, so I grew up one of them, <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> The funk to me that you're talking about, like, really translates in your music. Because I feel like a lot of your music has, like, an older soul to it. Like, yeah. you know, it kind of, it kind of, it, it, it gives me more of, like, an old school energy than like, a lot for of, sure. like, newer Bay Area music, for sure. For sure. Yep. That's how I'm coming. Yeah, man. Um, When you put out your latest project, and the, the, the entire thing's self-produced, right? Yes, sir. How does it feel like putting out a project that's entirely self-produced, opposed to something that you have other producers on? I would imagine there's almost like a pride that comes from it. Like, Bro, it's, it's a shit come with a damn trophy. Yeah. But it don't, you know, <laughs> but I'm going to get one for myself damn near, because <laughs> yeah. I, I just like the fact mentally that I could do something like that, you know, like knowing, like, yeah. I can do, you can, in showing, like, you know, you can do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's possible. You know, you could do it too. So, whatever you want to do, you know. It's also proof to yourself, I feel like. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you can prove right. everything to everybody a million times. Right, but most definitely. The most important things that you prove yeah, it to yourself. Yeah, give me a trophy, goddamn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm going to give myself one because that shit it is, it is like a pride. Like, you know, uh-huh. like. And it's like a style that I, you know, you know, it's like, do your thing, do my thing, you know. Yeah, it's cool too because I feel like when you're an artist that you're both an artist and a producer, and you self-produce all your stuff. Yeah. You you don't really have to rely on anybody for anything. Right. Yeah. Except for the shout out to the engineers in the studios. Yeah, yeah. You know, because that's what I do need. But at the same time, I can record it in my house. Uh huh. Do you, do you make a lot of your stuff at your house? Yeah, that last album was at the house. Oh, sure. that's cool. So that's like what we were talking about earlier. I mean, like, yeah. how you can literally make music with nothing now. Right, right, exactly. It's like it's you to a place where, you you know, you can own more of your stuff, more profitable. It's like you right. can literally be, be in your room with a laptop and make a full album. Right, right, type shit. That's what I was on. You, you, how old do you say you were again? You're I'm 28. You're 28, okay. Yes, sir. So do you feel like being 28... You have like a different perspective than a lot of the people you work with, or do you work with more people your age? I work with everybody uh-huh. who's you know who's uh, true to the craft. You know, I, I, and a lot of the, I look up to a lot of the greats. So, you know, shout out Uncle Short. You know, I gotta, I you know, I, I work with everybody who's funky. Really, mm-hmm. you know, if I dig your style, we could get down. Yeah, you know, it's re- it is. so it's really just a matter of whether or not you rock with somebody's music. Like, you wouldn't want to work ever with anybody who you're like, eh, on their music? Well, most definitely it is that, because, you uh-huh. know, I got an ear for music, no matter what genre. Yeah. You know, like, uh, at, at B-Howes, even in the jazz band on the drums. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm open to different kind of styles. But it's just like, if it's not giving me a feeling, then I, you know, then, you know, keep doing you. <laughs> I feel that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the feeling to me, too, is like 
a lot. Like, I feel like a lot of the music that I love is because of a feeling. You right. know what I mean? Like, I, it makes me feel something. Be that happy, sad, right. whatever. It gives me some kind of feeling. Right. That's how I feel with, like, Tone's music, like, and working with Tone. Like, he his shit is always giving off that feeling for me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Ever since the first couple songs I heard from him, he, he always got a purpose or, you know, he, pu- he push you with purpose. And you could tell, you know, in the music. And that's yeah. why I rock with Tom. You can also really easily tell somebody's intentions are genuine. That part. Especially when you're working with them on a creative level. That part. I feel like it takes, like, no time to try to understand that. Do you ever get in a room with somebody, like an artist, and you just feel like, that, oh, this person's genuine. You know, this person really, really Most rocks definitely. with what I'm doing. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, it's a lot of genuine artists out there that really rock with it. And mm-hmm. want to see it keep going and dig the funk. And it's like, keep going. You know, and and we get down. I get down on all kind of records. Like I said, I used to work with Duckworth, so you yeah. Know, shout out to Duck. So you know, I got all kind of little different flavors that I could kick for real. Mm-hmm. You know, it just depends on if you you know get that feeling. What's cool too is like in the Bay Area, we have so many, so much different music. You know, right? If you're like a producer that really doesn't specialize in one thing, and you're willing to do whatever and try anything, you can yeah. make all kinds of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's fun. Do That's you, when you're having fun. Do you feel like you have, like, a main style? Or, like, will you really go out and do anything? Like, if somebody was like, oh, let's do, like, a now, weird melodic record, would you be willing to do it? Well, if I, could get, if I could get down with it, you know, but it's just, like, I do have my own style, and I'm starting to yes. see that. Oh, I think my headphones just went. Okay, no, it's showing. It's yeah. good. Anyway, what were you saying? Sorry. Man, I got my own little style, and, you know, I keep it, I keep it. I keep it me, but I, I'm starting to learn that I, I got my own style and working mm-hmm. with other people. But, you know, it's it's cool to get with other styles. You know, it's cool to just mesh and just make different sound and stuff. It's just art, you know. It's like different colors, mm. you know, getting different artists, different paint, you know. I was just told some great ass advice by my nigga Nate Curry. Shout out my nigga Nate. I know Nate Curry from uh, Sacramento. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I I, I interviewed uh, Imaginary Other, his cousin. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I uh, was just in the lab with him and Pilo and shit. And my nigga, uh, little Snickerfoot. I don't know if you know him. Snickerfoot. Yeah, little Snickerfoot. I like that name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the guys, man. Shout out. But um, yeah, we was in there working and shit and. He was giving me some good advice about like just like like you said I'm a more melodic type you know what I'm saying because I was uh-huh. trying I'm trying to do some shit like that too, so he was just like you know what I mean you gotta kind of not be afraid of doing whatever and trying out new shit yeah you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and also don't be afraid of like hitting wrong notes. You know what what do you mean like <laughs> on, a, on a singing level or yeah, like, like okay. you know what I'm saying don't be afraid like fuck it. Cause you're in the studio, you can do this shit a thousand times to yeah. get it right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Just be comfortable with what you're doing. That is true. That that's another cool aspect of like making music now. It's like you know we can be in the studio and we can retake something a thousand times, whereas like 15 years ago, <laughs> hell no, you can do that. That shit is one take, Jake. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Are you guys more of writers when you're in the studios, or do you do like the freestyle stuff more? Like, <laughs> how, how much of a process do you have? This nigga want to always write some shit. <laughs> I'm always like, let's freestyle, nigga. Let's just get it going. But I ain't gonna lie, he been fucking with me, and I, it's like, yeah. yeah, say that. He has. He's been really fucking with me. I've been, I've been getting him to get in, in the bag and fuck with the freestyle shit because I feel like if we can get, if we can really get down freestyling, we can make songs easy as fuck and just, you know, keep it going when we in the lab instead of sitting down writing, taking hella time, trying to, you know, mm-hmm. you get stuck on a song and, you know what I mean? It's like, fuck it, let's just go in there and punch in. Wherever you stop, I'm gonna come in. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's like the appeal, I guess, of like, as you, you know, as you get more advanced and you get better at this stuff, being able to like, just go in and freestyle. I guess the appeal is that you can you you can make twenty songs in in a day? You know what I mean? And they're cool. They're actually yeah. good songs. And like we said about the flow, mm-hmm. keeping that flow going and just like now we on a roll. We get, you know what I'm saying? We got we hot right now. You know what I'm saying? So let's right just keep now. making music. When you guys are in the studio, how long will you like on average be there? Be in there for like a day? Oh shit! I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it, minimum four hours, Jeez. max maybe twelve. That's long. 
A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> like 12, huh? That's not long enough. I feel like we didn't even did longer. We didn't did overnights in the lab before, but. I didn't slept in my lab, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, like, we didn't slept in the studio and all type of shit. Wake up, get back to it, like. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like there's a certain point, like, when you're recording, that you, like, max out on creativity for a day? Oh, hell yeah. Like, you oh, feel yeah. like at a certain point, you're just <laughs> oh, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. can't be oh, here yeah. anymore. At yeah. this point. Yeah, yeah. We, we for sure know when to wrap it up. We know, we know when the sauce is, is when we didn't use yeah, all the yeah. juice for the day. Gotta go yeah. live a little. Yeah, yeah. it's like gotta now go we gotta go little. relax. Let's go enjoy life a little bit. Maybe. See some outdoors. Yeah, because most studios be dark. We were just light. talking about this. We're like, yeah. I don't, I don't think like dark studios are good for like creativity. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like if some if there's no light in the goddamn studio, like you're gonna be like depressed and you're not gonna come out with like interesting, exciting music. I feel that. I feel, I feel the that. fuck out of that. But you yeah. know what? We always had to make do with what we had. Yeah, most definitely. And this is uh, from what we had before. I done been in all kind of situations, <laughs> man. So this is great. <laughs> you know, it don't matter the. I didn't been in places with worse lighting than this, believe it or not. Yeah. You know, uh, I done been in little basements making beats and making hits. You know, it don't really mm-hmm. matter where I'm. And to be honest, them is where the most creative shit comes from. It feels more like. Yeah. You we made hits like, in bullshit ass spaces. Man. <laughs> literally, the mic it. is in the corner right yeah. there. Yeah. Right there. Like, literally. That's perfect. That's a perfect perfect corner right there. there. (laughs) For our style, the way we come in. We set the whole lab up right (laughs) here. You don't even know. Laptop, everything. Uh The little closet studio, get the the soundproofed in there. It worked though, man. Yeah. When you when you're working with good engineers Mm -hmm. that know what they're doing with the stems, that at that point, he taught me that shit. Like I used to be a rapper, That's like, me. I was just going in there making music, and they send me the wave file, and I'm good. Like, I was okay with that. Huh. And not even getting mixed, mastered, none of that shit. Really? Yeah, so it was like, now, I'm like, I'm bringing my hard drive. This nigga got me bringing a hard drive to the lab. Yeah. I need the stems. Make sure put all this shit in the file. Like, if I, if I, if we don't come to the studio ever again... I need this shit. You know what I'm so you'll have somebody else mix it. Like, like you'll take a record that you made the studio, then you know have somebody else mix it. I bring after. it to my boy Eli. I have him yeah. put his sauce on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are Easy. you particular in the way you mix your vocals and stuff? Like, uh, opposed to a beat. Like, do you want to be like a lot louder than the beat? Because I know some artists are like pretty particular in regards to how they mix their records. I feel like honestly, it depends on the song. Yeah. I I let that shit flow. Like I'm not gonna let. I'm not gonna force nothing. Mm-hmm. I just want that shit to just be smooth. And I feel like the engineer always has a better ear than I than I have because they have an engineer's ear. Like, yeah. I ain't going to lie, you'll sound a little better if your voice was a little louder or the beat was just a little louder, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a different thing. I think it's a thing, too, when you're like, I, I when you, you're on a track by yourself opposed to on a track with a bunch of features. Like, like one track, for example, like, uh, like bo- bo- what was that one? It's uh, Boss Shit that you did. There were oh, like, shit. Yeah, how many how many features on that on Three. that track? Three. It's four all together. Yeah, Three so so four it's four like four. Yeah. So it's like four people on one track. You're yeah. you're gonna mix that record very differently than you mix like one voice on a track. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Everybody can't have the same fucking what is it? E- little e- filters, e- equalizers, and compressors. Yeah, mm-hmm. like you know when they put in the filters and shit. Like my voice, I might be popping harder on the P's when I'm saying my shit. So yeah, you know what I mean? Uh huh. Yeah. You gotta have a good engineer for sure. What was it like recording that record? Like getting everybody's verse? Were you all in the studio once, or mm, was we I like? think I recorded it. I recorded my part first, uh-huh. and then y'all had came over to the house. Oh yeah, I heard his verse. Yeah, and I'm like, I gotta talk shit. Like it was like one of them. Like I, we didn't. We be battling. I was gonna say, yeah, you get competitive yeah, in the studio. Yeah, like, yeah. Sure. Each other. He sure. makes some shit. he'd go in there and go, talking so much shit. It's like. It didn't been times where he out rap me and I'd be like I can't been, even get on this. It's been the yeah. same for me though, for, just with him though. It's been songs that I I love that but by him, just, but I was just like shit. Right, you can't that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, he's he like, really, like nothing I can he, do. He beat uh-huh. me. He really oh, that those, those are the kind of people you have to have around you though. People who are elevating you. You know, like you yeah. want to beat them, they want to beat you. Yeah, yeah we're pushing each other, other helping right. each other one right. by one. Right. Especially in your immediate circle, like I feel like the opposite thing of what you want to do is have like yes man in your circle. You know what I mean? Right. We and say that's, this all the time. And that's what he do. You know, and I, he do that for mm-hmm. me, especially in the studio. He'll be like, hey, bro, say it like this. You know, I'll be saying some other shit. And he'll be like, no, take it like this. 
You know, we starting to get into all kind of shit. We we, we singing now. We singing in there. <laughs> yeah. Hell of a shit. Yeah. Were you not singing before? Yeah, I'm not. Really? How, was it hard to, like, build up the confidence to do that on the mic? Because I know a lot of rappers who, like, struggle to transition to singing. It's hard to get comfortable with, I guess. For sure. I for sure had to build up the confidence to be like, I'm going to try to sing. Yeah. Because I know I can't fucking sing. You know what I mean? I'm not Chris Brown. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? If I knew, you know. I, I don't think you want to be Chris Brown. Yeah, <laughs> for surely. My nose is clean. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but a nigga, a nigga know he can't sing, so it's like, all right, I'm going to just go in there and fuck with it and just try to get better. Yeah. And then you got to learn your tone, too. Mm-hmm. Everybody can sing, for real. Do you think that? Because I've always felt the same way. I feel like everybody can sing. It's about, like... Your tone. You got to yeah. find which pocket you sound good in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely. It's also, like, I don't know. I think, like, to me sometimes, like, really traditional vo- voices that are, like, traditionally good singing voices are boring. Like, I like I, I think I like my voices a bit more interesting if they're, like, weirder, you know, and more different in rapping and singing. Most definitely. Because mm. it, it's really easy to be, like... Well, I, I'm not going to say it's easy. But there's a lot of, like, good singers, you know, people who sound, like, good in one specific pocket. But can you manipulate right. your voice to where it sounds different than anything I've heard? Yeah. That's the kind of shit that will stick with you. Huh. Most definitely. Hmm. Would you? What, what are your guys' like, biggest musical goals for the upcoming year? Like, what do you want to accomplish by the end of the year? Mm. That's a great-ass question. For me, I say consistency. Hmm. You know, that's a major goal this year, to stay consistent, to keep... Uh, Keep going, you know, at this point. Just got to keep going, you know. I, we done did a lot of work during the pandemic. It wasn't like we wasn't doing no work. So we got a lot of work that's about to come out this year. So to just stay consistent. It might be a volume two to that King of the Underground coming. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. Shit. I damn near say, for me, I want a damn near consistency, but... I think we need we need one of them ones. My a goal, hit. we need a we we need a radio hit this that year. Part. Consistent hits, down yeah, damn. I yeah. think, and I feel it. I feel it too, man. It's gonna happen. Yeah. He, you can't say I need one. You gotta say I'm, I'm gonna get one. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We manifesting it right yeah. now. Speaking of existence, you're about right to come now. back to this interview with a radio hit. Yeah, yeah most yes, definitely. Sir. Mm-hmm. Um, Hey, all right, guys. Appreciate you doing this, bro. It was a great conversation. Yeah, no, nah, I appreciate Thank you, you having us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Tell everybody where they can find your stuff, listen to your music, your ads, socials, everything. Hit me up at Boss Life Big Spence uh, on Instagram, Boss Life Big Boss on the Twitter. Uh, yeah, all that, all that sauce, Boss Life Big Spence at gmail.com if you want to send me something. Shout out to all the producers, you know. Shout out to my brother, 10 Piece Tongue. Um, babies, you yeah, already know man. who it is, man. Ten piece tone on everything. Shit, Cash App, Apple Pay, Venmo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do Type take shit. fees. I do charge fees, Type baby. Shit. You know what I mean? But it's ten piece, man. You can find me on all platforms, streaming. Yeah. Uh, fucking Apple Music. Yeah. Any uh, any what media platform? Yeah, find yeah. me, man. Well, Look like me up. One zero. Ten piece tone. One zero. All right, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Appreciate you, brother. All right, music matters.